it's Tabitha with Cimarron Homestead and today we are trying to get ready for some significantly colder weather than what we're used to. Next week we're looking at getting into the negative temperatures which for my area, I live in Oklahoma, is kind of unusual. We are prepping to set the chickens up with some straw and some extra heat lights and stuff to keep them warm over the next week. I'm going to go to Atwoods to get a chicken waterer that I can add a heater to. And then I'm going to go to Tractor Supply and get the straw and the hay because the feed store where I usually get my stuff is closed today. And, then, and I also am going to get some brooder lights that I'm going to put up in the chicken coop. And then we'll go to Walmart and I'm going to try to keep the chicken water from freezing with a fish tank heater. I'm going to go get that later and we'll try it out. Hopefully that will work. And we're going to go set up the trash can feeder that we made for you on one of our previous videos. So if you have not seen that video, go check it out. It's great. It's a 32 gallon trash can feeder. So it makes homesteading life for the busy family super easy and manageable. I'm going to talk about what's in our chicken food, but that's my plans and I'm running out of daylight. So I am going to get off here and get busy and I'll show you as much of my day as I possibly can because the most important thing is that I get my animals taken care of and get them what they need before it gets to be unbearably cold. We're about to set up our chicken water that I got today. It's a 12 gallon feeder. It has three spots where the chickens can get water and it also has a, an access point for the cord to set up a heater. I am going to go to Walmart and try to get a 15 gallon fish tank heater and hope that it's strong enough um, to keep the water from freezing. I've not tried it before, but we're gonna try it because it's half the price of the lowest wattage heater that you can get at Atwoods. I'm gonna set that up and I'm also about to set up the trash can heater.
just set up the water and the feeder and our chickens have never been on the water nipples and they've already started figuring it out before we even finish setting it up. So I think that's a good sign. And we've only got one bucket. Hi, Sammy. Off, Bubby. Uh, we've only got one uh, five gallon bucket of feed in the chicken feeder and they're already going at it. So it's just easier since it's a mix of several things. It's just easier for us to mix it in a five gallon bucket and then dump it in. I am making this video from in the house because it is super cold outside. It's actually lightly snowing and it's way below freezing. So I took some footage of me checking on the chickens last night and I'll show you that in just a minute. But we have a fish tank heater in our 12 gallon chicken water that has nipple access points, three of them for the chickens to access their water. And we went with that because we thought it would be less likely to freeze. And even with the heater in there, all three nipples were frozen solid last night. I was not able to get them to push in at all. So I know the chickens weren't able to access their water last night with that. So back to the drawing board, I am going to try to venture out to the farm store here in just a little bit. I'm giving the roads a little bit of time to clear. So I'm gonna try to go and see if I can get a bigger heater or I might go to Walmart and see if I can get a bigger fish tank heater because the one I got is for up to 15 gallons and it's just not doing it. Last night, the water was completely thawed, but this morning, even with the heater in there, there was a, a sheet of ice on the top of the water, which, I mean, technically it's still not frozen, but they can't access it, so the water's just not quite warm enough. So I'm gonna be working on that today, trying to figure out a better watering situation for them so that they have water through this terrible cold weather spell we're having. In Oklahoma, we do get cold weather, but we don't have a lot of it, like drastically cold weather. At one point they were talking about, about us possibly going into the negative temperatures. I don't think they're saying that anymore, but that is pretty drastic for us. We don't see that very often. So I have a lot of chicken footage today and I wanted to talk to you about what all goes into the chicken feed. And then I might get the rabbit footage to you in a couple days. I don't know because a lot of my rabbit footage I didn't actually catch because it was getting late and it was the temperatures were starting to drop and I was just trying to hurry and get everybody inside so that um, nobody was unbearably uncomfortable or, you know, I didn't want anybody to get frostbite or anything like that on their, their ears. So I was trying to hurry and get them in the house and I was able to do that, but my, my recording was sacrificed because I had to make my animals my priority and they're all cozy and warm in the house. And I have one mama that we have been hoping and praying that she would build her a nest because this is kind of her last shot at being a breeder rabbit for our rabbitry. And she has been pushing hay together, like she's trying to build a nest and she's never done that before. So I'm very hopeful. I'm hoping she starts to pull fur soon and that it is what we think it is and not just her making a comfy bed for herself. So this weather could be blessings because <laughs> we have four, see we have Betty, Evie, Zoe, and Lucy. So we have four females that are due to kindle in the next week or two and we're gonna have this cold weather for about that amount of time. So hopefully everybody is pregnant Everybody has healthy babies and we might get to do that while they're inside so that will be a lot easier and a, a lot warmer if we do have any issues maybe we can still intervene with her babies if she for some reason doesn't have that mothering instinct to take care of them I bred them all at the same time 
hoping that if I had some issues, I could move some babies over to another mama. Anyways, I'm going off on a, a ramble. So we'll just, we'll just go on. I need to get the water situation taken care of and I'm gonna go get a different heater. Goodness, it's cold out here and frozen. I just wanted to walk out here and show you guys. I don't have a light for my phone and it's dark out. So I'm walking out here with Samson because he had to go to the bathroom anyways. So I wanted to walk out here and show you guys what the chicken coop, how it turned out all put together because I was not out here when they finished it. So I kind of wanted to see it for myself too. So they're all up in the top part of the coop. But they got their heat light. Their water is he um, hooked up to the heater. I don't know if you can see their trash can set up. I'm gonna try to walk in here and get a look at their water to see if it's still thawed. Okay, so it looks like we have a problem. I'm climbing over this roosting bar, but it looks like the nipples are frozen, so I'm gonna open this up and look at it. Well, the water is not frozen. So it seems to be doing its job. And the plastic is not too hot or anything. But the nipples are still frozen solid, all three of them. Okay, so it is very cold out here and our water is not frozen in our water, but the nipples froze. So back to the drawing board and I don't think you can see the chickens in the top part um, because it's iced over on the glass, but they're all bedded up there because I put a whole bale of straw in the top part and then on the under the covered section of their run I'll see if I can show you light and then um, the cover part of their straw so I don't know they're over here in, in this section over here but you can see there's ice on everything I don't know if you can hear that but even the mud is frozen but anyways um, we will be, <sighs> I'll be trying to figure out what to do to keep their water thawed so that they can access their water.
So uh, I've got Noah here. He's my youngest. Hi. And we are going to, what are we going to do? We're going to show you all this ingredients. What are the ingredients for? For food for animals. What animals? Our chickens. That's right. But they don't really lay now. That's because it's cold and we don't have a lot These of sunlight. These are all the ingredients. Yeah. Okay. So, like Noah told you, we are going to talk to you today about all of the ingredients that we put in our chicken feed. And this is the ingredient too. Yeah, okay, so this will be the first one we talk about. Okay, what does that say? This green split peas. Yes, so we buy this at Walmart um, by the one pound bag. You can probably get bigger bags and you can probably add more than we do, but we add one of these to a five gallon bucket or at least that's what we did last time. We may do more next time. The servings, there's 13 servings in one bag and uh, there, for per serving, there's eight grams of protein and nine grams of fiber. All right, so what's next, Noah? It's corn chops. Corn chops. I don't know if they can see, hold on. Okay, so corn chops, we have protein is not less than 8.5%. Fat is not less than 3.5% and fiber is not more than 3%. Let's do this one next. Next we have crimped oats. Where is this And root? you're probably familiar um, with this because we talked about it for our rabbits. We also give this to our rabbits. And uh, it's crude protein again is 11%. Crude fat is not less than four, and crude fiber is 12%. Okay, and this is Milo, and it doesn't actually, which is weird because all the other ones did, but it does not have the nutritional information on the tag, so I might try to Google it, or you can look it up online and see if you can find out what the nutritional information was. I don't know if I... I think that maybe the the person who runs the farm store that we buy our feed at, I think he may have recommended this one for me. So I don't know if I ha ever, I don't know if I have the nutritional information on that, but I'll see if I can find it for you. And then what we don't have pictured or what we don't have a tag for is we add white millet and I threw the last bag away. So I threw the tag away that goes with it. So again, I'll try to get that nutritional information for you on that and put it down in the description box as well. And I'm gonna go with her. And then the other thing we add is mealworms, dried mealworms, and I should have gotten... What we're gonna give to the chickens. Yeah, we put that in their food and they're dried worms. And yeah, I don't have mealworms. the... I don't have the nutritional information for those. But one time we had trapped mealworms, but they all died. Yeah. So we put them in a hole. Anyways. Dig the hole back up. And then the last thing that we add to our chicken feed is the oyster shell. And we just do a small scoop, maybe a quarter of a cup, maybe, maybe, it, it's really not very much. It may be, even, it's probably even less than that, honestly, to a five, gallon bucket and so that is pretty much what we do we mix it by the five gallon bucket and then we just are pouring it into the trash cans from there and I do have some footage of us mixing feed but honestly not very much we were preparing for a winter storm or winter weather and so I think I already said this in another uh part of the video but we have, we're having really cold weather and we were trying to prepare quickly and we had a lot of things to do. And my camera we kept shutting off. We can Milo. What? Because it says it's only for an animal we don't have. No, it says for feeding purposes. Oh. Yeah. So we were in a hurry and so, and my camera kept 
shutting off because it was getting too cold. So our footage is limited on us actually mixing the feed. And so, sometimes we get blackouts. Which Anyways, I'll get no off here lie. and I guess we'll talk to you guys later. Okay, bye. Hope you like this video. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye.